Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be giving you a one year update on having my Amazon Kindle. This is the Kindle Paper White Signature Edition and I have it in agave green. This isn't actually like a green Kindle. It's just that the case is green, I think. Oh no, I lied. No, the Kindle actually is green itself and then it just looks like black on the front. But I got the Kindle in agave green. I believe this is 16 gigabytes. It's waterproof. We did pay extra for the no lock screen ads. So when I open it, oh, hold on. So when I open it, it's just like little pretty Kindle pictures. It's different. It's not always this picture. I think earlier it just had like a bunch of Kindle words up front, but this is the Kindle I have. And I just want to start with saying that I absolutely still love my Kindle. And I think it might even be my favorite thing that I own. Ever since I got this Kindle a year ago, I've been reading faster. I've been reading more. So far this year in 2024, I have read 22 books. In 2023, when I first got the Kindle, I only read six books because you know, I got it in October. And then it was like October, November, December, and I was able to get six books in. But even then, in the last year, I've read 28 books, and that's a lot more books than I've probably ever read since high school, maybe even before that. I haven't been reading in a really long time, but I've always wanted a Kindle because every time I see someone with one, it just looks so easy, so convenient. It just fits in your hand. It's so small. It's so lightweight. It's not a bulky book that I have to carry around. I absolutely love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna really get into the reasons why I love this Kindle so much. So the first thing is, is that the battery life, amazing, top notch. I swear, I think I barely charge this thing. I read at least an hour a day, and if I'm lucky, I read for two hours. That depends on like work, how much free time I give myself, how much time I give myself not being on my phone, you know, like how much free time I got out of work, like my morning time, my night time before bed, but I get that much reading in and I literally want to say that I charge this thing once a month. Maybe it even goes longer than that because I literally feel like I barely charge this thing. The battery life on it right now is 28% and I'm probably not going to charge today. Actually, I might because we're about to go on a trip this weekend, so I might charge it tonight actually when I get home from work, but the battery life is great. I think I've only ever once got it down to like 5% when I was in the middle of binge reading and that's only ever happened once. But other than that, battery life is not a concern for me. I think the battery life is still great a year later. Nothing's been diminished. Everything's great. I love it. And I do have one of those like wireless charging docks. For this Kindle, so all I have to do is plug in the wireless charging dock and I just slip it right in. And then I just touched on this a little bit when I was going over why I love this Kindle so much, but it is so lightweight. It's so small. It's compact. It's easy to carry. Look at this. Amazing, it fits in my purse. So I have a pink Reebok bag and I also have this new purse that I got from Burlington and this Kindle fits perfectly. It's so snug, it's easy. So whenever I go to like my doctor's appointment or if I'm waiting in line somewhere like a car appointment for an oil change or something where sometimes it could take 40 minutes or two hours, I have my Kindle and I can read and it's great. Lightweight, portable, literally everything I want in a book. Not bulky, not heavy. I kind of needed this on my cruise, but I really didn't want to risk losing this or getting it wet or something. So I brought physical books instead and they were even library books. So they weren't even mine. Not that I don't care about library books. I love library books because they're so fun. It's like Christmas every single day. But anyway, this Kindle, it's so portable. It's so easy. This thing can hold so many books on it too. So like if you get tired of one book, you can just easily switch. And there's no reason for you to carry like a bunch of books at once because it's all in here. Amazing. <laughs> Another benefit that I've come to start using recently was the fact that you can change the brightness on this thing because it's a digital platform, obviously. You can change the brightness and I mostly use the brightness changing whenever I go from nighttime reading to daytime reading. So like right now, I have my brightness at 10. But then when I go to read like in bed at night when Jamie's next to me and like the lights are dim, I need it lower. I'll lower it down to maybe six, seven or eight. Most of the time I use eight because I don't want it too low because it does strain your eyes a little bit because it is still essentially you reading in the dark. So I use 10 during the day and then eight at night when I'm sleeping. And I try not to use the brightness too much because it does drain your battery life. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to preserve the battery life. So I have my brightness at 10 and I have my warmth at four. And there is an option for you to schedule that and have an auto brightness, but I don't really use that because I, I like the settings I have chosen. If you're up to date on my reading book 
videos or I guess my videos in general, you'll know that I recently got a library card that has access to Libby. And if you don't know what Libby is, it's an online platform where you can rent, download eBooks for like a period of time. And so with the Libby that I have with my library, they let you rent books for three weeks. Cause whenever you rent regular library books, it's two weeks, but on Libby, it's three weeks. And it is awesome because I swear sometimes I can finish a book in three days and then other times I can't finish a book until after two weeks. So three weeks, it's like they knew that we need more time, you know? And sometimes I check out too many books at once and I need that three week period for me to actually read all those books. And anyway, I love the library card. I love my Libby. That's probably contributing to why I read so much too because everything is just so easy, so seamless. And the great thing about Libby is that it is compatible with Kindles or most books are. So every time you choose a book, you can go down and scroll to like the details and it says Kindle compatible. Then you can check out the book or like get a loan for the book on the Libby app. And then there's gonna be an option that says read with Kindle. And if you click on that, it's gonna like transfer you to your Amazon account, I think. And then it's gonna say download to your library or something along those lines. And then it's just gonna pop up on your Kindle. It's literally so easy. It's so convenient. Like who knew that that was a thing? Because one of my coworkers actually did mention Libby to me and how you can read it on your Kindle. And at first my brain was like, that sounds so complicated. How do I get a library book? And then download it on my Kindle. But it's seamless, it's easy, it's great. Get a library card, make sure they have Libby. Be sure they have Libby. Libby is like the highlight of it all. And it's just so easy and makes your Kindle so useful. I, I'm i telling you, I use this thing every single day. And ever since I got a library card with Libby, I've been using it even more. I, I literally feel like it's Christmas every single week because I go through books so fast. I do wanna say that the books that aren't compatible with Kindle, they're still like e-reader options like there's one called epub and apparently you can read the epub compatible books on your kindle but you have to do some kind of like software downloading on your computer and then connect your kindle to your computer to get that book downloaded onto your kindle and it just sounds complicated so i don't even bother with those books i guess those books aren't meant to be read by me because i am not willing to put in the time to figure out how to get that book onto my kindle if it ain't seamless if it ain't easy i'm not reading it unless i like absolutely have to have to read it for whatever reason i'm not gonna do it so for all those authors or Libby people that want their books to be read, get it on Kindle compatibility. The last thing I want to mention when it comes to Libby is that the audiobooks, there are audiobooks on Libby and they are not to be slept on. I've read, read, I've listened to three audiobooks so far. I've listened to I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton, and recently I just finished Hula by Jasmine Iolani Hakes. And let me just say, that I thought audiobooks used to be so boring. They put me to sleep. I wouldn't be able to like picture or understand what I'm listening to because it's just someone talking to me, but no. Audiobooks are great because the people narrating the books, like they put different tones and different dialects or whatever you want to call it to make it feel immersive into the story. With Jeanette McCurdy's memoir and Tom Felton's memoir, those two books are so easy to listen to for audiobook because they are the ones narrating their memoirs. So like it's Jeanette McCurdy talking to me, it's Tom Felton talking to me. And so it just makes the audiobook so much more enjoyable. Hula, it wasn't narrated by Jasmine Yolani Hakes, but it really doesn't matter who narrates it because it's just a regular book it's a novel it is not a memoir but the lady who does narrate it i don't remember her name on the top of my mind right now but she did so well because there are three main characters in this novel and the narrator the way she does it is she has different tones and like different pitches of her voice for you to understand whenever the grandma's speaking or whenever the mom is speaking or whenever the daughter is speaking so this book is about like three generations of women but it's just it's spoken so well it's read so well and i think audiobooks are best listened to when they're memoirs because you really want someone to feel like they're talking to you because hula was kind of difficult to get through i think like the first 10 to 50 percent of the book i was kind of confused on why there's so much history going on who these people were and because there are like so many hawaiian words being used because it's a hawaiian book i was not getting the context clues of trying to figure out what those words meant but over time it was great i it ended up loving the book and i gave it five stars so Anyway, don't sleep on audiobooks. Libby has audiobooks. Regular e-readers compatible with Kindle. Libby is great. Get a library card and make sure they have Libby. It's, yeah. Okay, that's all I have to say about Libby. <laughs> 
Another great thing about having a Kindle is that you will prevent like having book clutter. I used to be someone that wanted to have my own home library. I had bookshelves of books, so many books, except over the years I realized I never touched those books ever again. I read them once and they were just there. And for a while it did make me happy seeing that I had my own library of books. But then over time I realized I didn't want to have to move all these books because if you didn't know, I move around a lot. I have divorced parents. They moved a lot because they were renting for a while, but now they were like stable in a house that they own and all this stuff. And so with all that moving and the fact that I had to go away to college and I moved many times during college, like that was a lot of books for me to move around. And so finally I decided I'm not gonna buy books anymore. I'm not collecting books anymore. What I have is what I have. I'm even gonna give them away, sell them, whatever. Like I don't wanna carry books anymore. And so having this Kindle is so great because I can carry all the books that I wanna read right now on here and be fine. And even though I return them to the library, like they're no longer on this Kindle once I finish them, I can just re-rent them. I can loan them again and read again whenever I want through the library and through Libby. And so like, what's the point of me keeping all these books? Not gonna lie, after finishing Hula, it made me really want to buy the book so that way I could read it and try and connect it to the audiobook. But I realized that Hula is actually on Kindle Unlimited. So maybe I will one day, maybe it's on Kindle Unlimited forever, but that just proves my point that I don't need to own these books because there's so many different options of like where I can read these books for so much cheaper. If you wanna prevent book club, if you're trying to not be materialistic, live a minimalistic lifestyle when it comes to book, Kindle. So while we're on the topic of Kindle Unlimited, if you don't know what Kindle Unlimited is, it's you pay a monthly subscription. I think it's about $12, 12 to $13 every single month where you get access to like thousands of books on there. It doesn't have every book on there. It has more like the kind of mainstream books, but not really like upcoming authors and then lots of indie books. And so it's a really good way to get into reading for cheap. And it was definitely a good way to get me into reading when I first got this Kindle. Cause when I got this, it came with a three months free Kindle Unlimited promotion whatever and so that's how i read my six books through Kindle limited for free and honestly there are some pretty good books on there sometimes i do have popular books because a couple months ago fourth wing was on there and it was like a big tiktok book so i was like oh my god i have to read it it's on Kindle limited and i did i loved it and i don't actually know if it's on Kindle limited anymore it might be but with how popular it is i doubt it i haven't checked because i obviously already read the book but I highly recommend Kindle Unlimited if you want to just have a wide range of books, you don't really care what you read and you just go through a library of stuff or you can just obviously get a library card with Libby and look for whatever book you're actually looking for and just read it for free. But yeah, Kindle Unlimited is great. I thought about canceling it whenever I got my library card and Libby access, but I realized that sometimes the books on Libby aren't Kindle compatible. So then I'll go on to Kindle Unlimited and look for it and it is on Kindle Unlimited. Hula is actually one of those examples because I saw Hula in a second and Charles store and I wanted to read it. So I looked on Libby, it wasn't available, just the audiobook. So that's why I ended up listening to the audiobook instead of reading the book. And then I found it on Kindle Unlimited, but I was already halfway through the audiobook. So I just finished it with the audiobook but now I know it's on Kindle Unlimited. So it's gonna have both library card, Libby, and Kindle Unlimited. It's just like, now you have access to almost every single book in the whole wide world. It feels great. <laughs> so I do have some Kindle Unlimited recommendations for you. I wrote them down here because I don't wanna actually miss one. So the one book that I can 100% say got me into reading, like, wow, reading is actually so fun. Like after getting my Kindle was Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. And it was such a simple read. It was so fun. It was like a summer read, but not really, but yes, really. But it was it was fun. It was romantic. It was cute. I loved it. I believe I gave it five stars. With how I'm describing it now, I hope I gave it five stars. The next one is obviously one that I've already mentioned. It's Hula by Jasmine Yolani Hakes. And then the next one is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And then A Girl Called Samson by Amy Harmon. Those are just four books that I've read this past year that are on Kindle Unlimited that I highly recommend. A Girl Called Samson, it's like not as much of a highly recommend, but like out of all the books I've read, it's on the list of highly recommended. And then my recommendations in general. So these are just books that I recommend in general. Like it could be on Kindle Unlimited. It could be one that I read through the library or Libby. And the first one is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I literally could not put the book down. <laughs> Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, and obviously the rest of the series. She only has two books out right now, but Aug Storm's gonna come out in January and I am so excited. And then the last book that I recommend is Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. Now again, with the memoirs, try the audiobook and make sure the authors are actually the ones narrating it because it just makes it 10 times better. 
Yes, Tom Felton narrates Beyond the Wand and talks about Harry Potter, and it's literally great. All right, now let's talk about how I actually read on my Kindle, like how I have it set up, like the font sizing and all that stuff. So I left my theme to custom theme. I guess that just means I can customize it myself, obviously. The font, I have Bookerly. For boldness, I have no boldness at all. For size, I keep it at six. I think that's just what I like. I don't really know how to explain it, but I like it. That's what I've been using. For layout, I keep the orientation on the first one, margins the first one, alignment the first one, and spacing the second one. And then for the more tab, so I have my show clock while reading on because I want to actually be able to keep track of how long I'm reading and make sure I'm not just wasting away in bed reading. Book mention is on. I don't really know what that means. I haven't seen anything with book mentions. There's also about this book. Sometimes you go in and look at the books, have that on. I turned off popular highlights because every now and then while I'm reading, I'll see a quote that's underlined and it says underlined by like 10,000 people and it kind of takes me away from the book because I'm like immersed in the story and then all of a sudden I see, oh, 10,000 other people also like this line and then it kind of just puts you back into reality and I forget that I'm reading a book and I'm in real life, you know? Like when you're reading a book, you feel like you're in the story, but then you get taken out and it's like, oh crap, I'm just reading a book, this ain't real. You know, so I turned that off because it was starting to get annoying and I highly recommend it so that way you can just enjoy your book and not worry about what other people think. And also because other people highlight it, it kind of changes your interpretation of that line because you start thinking about why other people might have highlighted it and whether you would have highlighted it or not without people knowing, you know, so like, just turn it off. I also have highlight menu on. That's it. That is how I read. And again, with the brightness, I keep my brightness to 10 during the day. And then while I'm reading at night, like when I'm laying in bed, I'll change it down to eight. And then for warmth, I keep it at four. So yeah, 10 is good. Alrighty, I think that is everything I have to say about my Kindle. Right now, I'm currently reading Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Yep, it is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And it's taken me a bit to get into because I have to get used to the language of the 1800s and stuff, but it's fun, cozy, and it is chilly outside right now. That's why I'm wearing this jacket and my house is 69 degrees right now. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I convinced you to get a Kindle if you don't already have one because like I said, literally this entire video, it's great. There wasn't really anything that I don't like about this Kindle. There's actually nothing I don't like about this Kindle. This thing is perfect. And I really hope you get one and I really hope you utilize it. It's probably gonna save you a lot of money in the long run. Let's see, 28 books in the past year and normally books cost at least like 13 bucks each. Gosh, I can't do that math in my head. What's 28? Let's do 28 times 10, so $280. So I've read at least $280 worth of books. I'm gonna put the math of what 28 books times $13 is on the screen, because I am assuming that most paperback books are about 13 bucks. They could be more expensive nowadays, now that everything's increasing, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you love your Kindle as much as I do. I hope you get a Kindle if you don't already have one, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! -bye.